your schedule, especially on this day, to be with us. We hope that your worship experience will be both pleasurable and profitable with us. While it's not missed on me, today is Mother's Day. So let's celebrate our mothers today. Our mothers that are present with us, let's love them extra hard today. And our mothers that have gone on, let's remember them in a very, very special way in how to help shape our lives. So happy Mother's Day to all the mothers today. I'll be opening up worship today from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. I remember the genuine faith of your mother Eunice. Your grandmother Lois had the same sort of faith and I am sure you have it as well. So I ask you to make full use of the gift God gave you when I placed my hands on you. Use it well. God's spirit doesn't make cowards out of us. The spirit gives us power, love, and self-control. With that, let us pray. Dear great God, we come thank you once again for being our God and our Father. We thank you for bringing it through through this past week, the ups and downs, the victories and the defeats, Father. We thank you for it all because we know that everything that happens to us happens for two reasons, our growth and your glory. So, Father, we come this day to give you praise, honor, and glory, and we pray that we do it in a, in a special way, Father. We pray that we do it in spirit and in truth with a zest, zeal, and a fervor that's deserving of a God that's been so good to his children. Father, we love you, we trust you, and on this Mother's Day, we ask you to bless all of us. This is our prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just say amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord on this great morning, Sunday morning. Amen. Let it rise. Hallelujah. Sing in a hallelujah. Sing in a hallelujah. Sing in a hallelujah. Come on, a hallelujah. We sing in hallelujah. We sing in a hallelujah. Sing in a hallelujah. Hallelujah, come on, turtle well, let the spirit of the Lord let her ride, rise among us, let the spirit of the Lord let her rise, come on, see now, let the painters of our king let her ride, rise among us, let her ride, and oh, oh, and oh, 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 oh come on. Oh, 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 let her ride. Let the Spirit of the Lord, let the Spirit of the Lord, let her ride. Rise among us, let the Spirit of the Lord, let her rise. Come on, see now, let the praises of our King, let her ride. Rise among us, let her ride. And oh, 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 and oh, 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 come on now, let it ride. And let the power of the Lord, let the power of the Lord, let it rise. Come on, sing now, let the power of the Lord, let it rise. You want to sing now, let the faders of our king, let it ride. Rise among us, let it ride. And oh, 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 come on now, let it ride. And let the glory of the Lord, let the glory of the Lord, let it rise. Come and sing now, let the glory of the Lord, let it rise. You ought to sing now, let the praises of our King, let it rise. Rise among us, let it rise. And oh, oh, and oh, 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 come on now, let it rise. 
and let the victory of the Lord, let the victory of the Lord, let it rise. Come on, sing now. Let the victory of the Lord, let it rise. You ought to sing now. Let the praises of a king, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. And oh, oh, and oh, 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 come on now. Let it rise. And let the blessing of the Lord, let the blessing of the Lord, let it rise. Come on, sing now. Let the blessing of the Lord let it rise. You are the sing now. Let the praises of our King let it rise. Rise among us. Let it rise. And oh, 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 and oh, 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 come on now. Let it rise. Yeah, let the joy of the Lord. Let the joy of the Lord let it rise. Come on, sing now. Let the joy of the Lord let it rise. You are the sing now. Let the praises of our King let it rise. Rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, 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 come on now. And oh, oh. Just say amen. Just say amen again. Let's do total praise on this morning. Total praise. Um, one second. Lord, I will. Strip 
Lord, you are my life. You are the strength of my life. Yeah, Lord, I lift my hand. My hands in total. Gracious God in heaven, Lord, as again we come to you, Lord, with bowed heads and humble hearts, Lord. Once again, thank you, Lord, for a day that wasn't promised to no one, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ, who came down and died for the sins of all mankind. And as we lift our voices, as we lift our minds, and as we lift our words and praise your high and holy name, we pray that everything we do be pleasing and accepted to your sight, Lord. Lord, we want to have, give a special prayer and blessings to all the mothers that you bestowed in our lives that was, a, was designed as an instrument to show us love as you showed us love each and every day, Lord. Continue to guide our footsteps, to guide our minds, to only think of you as in the remainder of this service, Lord, that all things that's in this world will be left out there so we can focus more on you. And we pray all these things in your son Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. Church say amen again. Yeah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Is that right, church? Happy Mother's Day to all the great mothers that are in the house on this morning. And all I can say to you right now is, Jesus, you've been good to me. Sing and G, Jesus, oh Lord, and you've been good, so good to me. All I want to say is Jesus, 
Jesus, you've been good to me. Everybody in this building, you've been good ever, ever so good. Oh, you have been good, so good, so good, so good to me. Do you believe? Don't you agree? Raise your hand. Oh, 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 oh Jesus, Jesus. In my life, you've been good. You've been good. So good, so good to me. And I want to say, Jesus, my Lord, you've been good. So good to me. And all I want to say, Jesus, Jesus, my Savior, you've been good to me. Everybody at my sailors, oh, you've been good, ever so good. Oh, ever so good. You have been good, so good, so good, so good to me. One more time, I want to say, Jesus, we thank you, Lord, oh, you've been good, so good to me, and I want to say, Jesus, Jesus, you've been so good. Every day of our lives to me, and I want to say, Jesus, 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 you've been good to me. Every day of our lives, and you, you've been good ever. Ever so good, you have been good, so good, so good, so good to me. All oh, let the church say amen. Church say amen again. Amen. I, I can't do the verses because we're on time limit. Amen. I'm so sorry, but we're on. We on time limit. Amen. Our last selection, though, is harvest time. Let's have harvest time up in here. Harvest time. And the next voice you will hear will be that of our great minister, Brother Lamont Ross. Amen. Harvest time. Oh, Lord, I've come. I come to receive my blessing, patiently waiting. Come on, yeah, for the harvest night, yeah, come on, I got the evil, yeah, let and want faith to know, my blessing shall come, it's mine, oh my, it's harvest time, oh Lord. I, I come, will I come to receive my blessing and patiently waiting yeah, for the harvest night? Come on, yeah, I got the Hebrews, yeah, laughing and one thing to know my blessing shall come, it's mine, oh my. It's harvest time. Oh, oh, I'm standing on your promise. I'm existing on your word. Everything that I speak, you give it to me. Oh, yeah. I was the Father, real good pleasure that the kingdom. It's mine, oh, it's mine, oh, my, it's harvest time, oh, Lord, come on, church, 
Yeah, I come to receive my blessing, patiently waiting. Yeah, for the harvest night, my sailors, I got the hebrews. Oh, eleven and my faith to know. All my blessings shall come. It's mine. Oh, mine, oh, it's up, it's up. Yeah, come on, and I believe in him for the great things he's promised me. Long time ago, I know I'm going to get it because the Bible tells me so. Now it's the Father, real good pleasure. That the kingdom it is mine. Oh, it's mine. Oh, mine is of his side. Oh, Lord. Yeah, yeah, I come to receive my blessing patiently waiting. Yeah, for the harvest night. Yeah, come on, church. I got the Hebrews. Yeah, laughing and one faith to know my blessing shall come. It's mine. Oh, mine. It's harvest time. Yeah, oh, my blessing, my blessing, my blessing. And my blessing, yeah, my blessing, yeah, come on, my blessing, yeah, oh, it's mine, oh, my, it's hard, it's hard. my blessing, sing it with me, my blessing, yeah, my blessing, oh, my blessing, yeah, my blessing. Come on, my blessing. Yeah, my blessing. Yeah, it's mine. Oh, mine. Oh, yeah, it's hot. Oh, 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 Lord. Yeah, I come. Yeah, I come to receive in my blessing. Patiently waiting. Come on, church. I got the Hebrews. Oh, yeah. Eleven and one. Come on, faith to know. My blessing shall come. It's mine. Oh, mine. Oh, it's harvest time. My blessings. Come on. Oh, come on. My blessing. My blessing. My blessings are. Yeah, my blessing. Oh, yeah. My seal is my blessing. Yeah, my blessings on my blessing. Yeah, come on. It is mine. Oh, mine. Yeah, it's all of its time. Oh, yeah, come on. It's mine. Oh, my, anything I need, oh, yeah, it's harvest time. All that you say, amen. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Uh, it is just good to uh, be in the house of the Lord, to worship him. Uh, we are grateful to the God of heaven for sustaining us over this past week uh, and bringing us to this place once again. If you're visiting with us, whether in present or uh, online, uh, we are glad that you chose to uh, be a part of uh, the time of worship here with the Church of Christ that meets on Marcellus Avenue. Uh, looking over the audience, I see some children are visiting their mothers today. Uh, and what a blessing it is to be able uh, to uh, pay honor to your mother and uh, 
this year, uh, last year rather, at this time, uh, visiting your mom looked a little bit different. Uh, it looked like uh, FaceTime and Zoom and standing outside in the yard or sitting in the garage, but uh, we thank God that we're able to uh, be together to worship uh, in the same space on uh, this morning. Uh, if you are uh, online, we invite you to uh, come and be a part of the assembly in person uh, as uh, we have taken many precautions to uh, help us to stay safe and uh, we uh, have an air purifying machine that runs constantly uh, throughout uh, both worship services. We sanitize surfaces uh, before and between services and so uh, we are doing what we can uh, to be safe and we trust the great God of heaven that he'll do what we cannot. Uh, we, uh, this morning it is Mother's Day and we uh, want to invite you to Proverbs chapter 31. Uh, Proverbs chapter 31 We'll be looking at verses 1 through 9 on uh, this morning, the 31st chapter of the book of Proverbs, uh, verses 1 through 9. And we ask that if you're able, if you would please stand for the reading of God's word from Proverbs 31, uh, verses 1 through 9. The words of King Lemuel, the oracle which his mother taught him. What, O oh my son, and what, O oh son of my womb, and what, O oh son of my vows? Do not give your strength to women or your ways to that which destroys kings. It is not for kings, O oh Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to desire strong drink, for they will drink and forget what is decreed and pervert the rights of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to him who is perishing and wine to him whose life is bitter. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his trouble no more. Open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all the unfortunate. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and defend the rights of the afflicted and the needy. You may be seated. I want to speak to you this morning on the subject, a mother's words. This Mother's Day, we begin a new series called Women of Influence. And we will be highlighting the contributions and the impact that various women have made as recorded in Scripture. There is much discussion and debate about what women can and cannot do. But when we look at Scripture, we see the influence of women, women of God, all throughout the pages of the Bible. And so in this series, Women of Influence, we will be looking at uh, some of uh, those women of influence and the lives that they lived and the contributions that they have made. Uh, mothers uh, are uh, the most influential women in our lives. Uh, they are our first caregiver, uh, our first nurse. Uh, our teacher, uh, our encourager, and so much more. Uh, it's been said that mothers write on the hearts of their children what the world's rough hand cannot erase. Uh, what your mother gives you, nobody can take it from you. Uh, this morning, we will highlight a mother's words found here in Proverbs chapter 31. And now in uh, Proverbs 31, we are most familiar uh, with verses 10 and following in Proverbs 31 that uh, looks at the characteristics of 
uh, the virtuous woman. Uh, in fact, there might have been one of two of you when uh, I said Proverbs 31, you were like, oh, here we go again. Uh, but we are less familiar with the words of Lemuel's mother here in verses 1 uh, through 9. Uh, there are some great life lessons gained from the words of wisdom uh, from this mother of a king. Uh, three main ideas I, I want to share with you from uh, her words and what she instructs her son. First of all, we see in verses 1 and 2, a mother's will, a mother's will. Uh, the words of King Lemuel, the oracle which his mother taught him. What, O my son, and what, O son of my womb, and what, O son of my vows? Uh, now, we are not certain of the identity of King Lemuel. Uh, some scholars believe that it is a pseudonym, pseudonym for uh, Solomon, and that is actually Solomon who wrote this. Uh, others believe that there was a king named Lemuel from Massa in Arabia, and he reigned there, and he is the one who penned the words of his mother. Uh, while we may not know for certain the identity of King Lemuel, we do know that he had a wise mother. Uh, this king had a wise mother, and this king was led to share the words of his mother with the rest of the world. Uh, there are some things that we have learned from others that are worth sharing. Uh, there's some wisdom and insight that our parents have instilled with us that uh, the world should know about. And so King Lemuel wrote down what his mother taught him. Uh, Lemuel's mother calls him the son of my vows. Uh, like Hannah uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, uh, this woman desired to have a child and vowed to raise that child well and raise that child wisely. Uh, she provided him with both formal and informal instruction. She warned him of the consequences of bad behavior and instructed him in the way that he should go. Uh, and every time she called Lemuel's name, it was a reminder of her duty as a mother. The very name Lemuel means unto God. Uh, so this mother, every time she said, Lemuel, come here. Uh, Lemuel, do this. And Lemuel, it is time to go. It was a reminder to her that she had dedicated this child unto God. Uh, this child doesn't belong to me. The child belongs to the Lord. And what I teach him should help him live up to his name. I hope you, you uh, have a, uh, you, you see your child as having a name worth living up to. Uh, you see your child as someone who is dedicated unto the Lord. And it's often said uh, that a woman cannot teach a boy how to become a man. And people, you all can debate that if you want to. But I'm here to tell you uh, that what a mother teaches her son will have a great impact on the man that he becomes. Uh, right here we see uh, Lemuel remembering the words of his mother. Uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 1 we see Paul acknowledging the contributions of the faith of his mother Eunice and his grandmother Lois and Paul makes the argument that you would not be the man you are today, Timothy, if it was not for the faith of your mother and your grandmother. What a mother teaches her sons will have a great impact on the man that he becomes. There, there are some mothers who have made a commitment, a commitment to teach your 
child to live his or her life unto God. Make a commitment to prepare your children for life as the head. As with God as the head. Make your decision to say, I'm going to bring my child up in a way that when they live their lives, they know that God should be the head of their lives. Have a will to train your child, nurture your child, instruct your child in the ways of the Lord. Uh, thank God for mothers who would train their children in the ways of the Lord God Almighty. Kudos to mothers who prepare their children for life. We are indebted to mothers who made vows to God and kept them. Mothers who committed themselves to raising their children well and wisely. We are who we are in large part because of the investment that our mothers have made in us. We are who we are because of mothers who had a will to give their children unto the Lord. Uh, we see a mother's will. Then secondly, in this text, we see a mother's warning. Uh, in verses 3 through 5, Lemuel's mother said to him, Do not give your strength to women or your ways to that which destroys kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to desire strong drink, for they will drink and forget what is decreed and pervert the rights of all the afflicted. King Lemuel, my son, you have to live your life differently because you are different. Uh, you are a king. Uh, and kings can't do what everyone else does. Uh, Lemuel, your, your, your position will grant you power and it will grant you access and there'll be some things that your position will allow you to do, but wisdom says, don't do them. Uh, he, she says to uh, her son, it's not for kings to get drunk. It's not for kings to give themselves to uh, a, a bunch of women. It's not for kings to live a life of recklessness. She tells her son, don't give your strength to women. Uh, she's not saying to him, don't get married. Uh, she's not saying that women are no good. Uh, she's saying don't give your strength to women, plural. Uh, don't give your strength, Lemuel, to multiple women. Uh, learn from the errors of kings like Solomon. And we see Solomon's error in uh, 1 Kings chapter 11, uh, verses 1 through 6. 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. Now King Solomon loved many foreign women um, along with the daughters of Pharaoh, a Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, uh, Sidian, uh, Sidonian, and Hittite women from the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the sons of Israel, you shall not associate with them, nor shall they associate with you, for they will surely turn your heart away after their gods. Solomon held fast to these in love. Now Solomon made the mistake that he went against the word of the Lord and the wisdom of of his parents and he gave himself to many women. Uh, verse number 3 uh, says there in 1 Kings chapter 11 he had 700 wives, princesses and 300 concubines and his wife turned, his wives turned his heart away. It's amazing when we do what God says don't do, what ends up happening is the very thing that God says would happen. Uh, for when Solomon was old, let that sink in for a minute. 
he wasn't a young fool. He waited until he got old to lose his mind. When Solomon was old, his wives turned his heart away after other gods, and his heart was not wholly devoted to the Lord his God as the heart of his father David had been. Solomon made the mistake of thinking that just because he was a certain age that he was beyond being influenced by these wives from these other nations. When he was a young man, he was focused on the Lord. When he was a young man, he did right in the sight of the Lord. He sought the Lord. He devoted himself to, himself to the Lord. But as he got older, Pride began to set in and he felt like he could handle it. He could put himself in the fire and not get burned. He decided that I have done well so far. If I go ahead and do what I want to do now, it will be all right. Uh, see, it's not always the young men uh, that mess up. Uh, sometimes it's thinking you have it together and you are old enough now where you understand the game and you can play the game well enough to not get played yourself, that's when trouble often comes in. Uh, verse, verse number five, for Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the detestable idol of the Ammonites. Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and did not follow the Lord fully as his father David had done. Solomon gave his heart to many women and it took his heart away from God. His judgment was clouded and his decision making ability was impaired. And so Lemuel, my son, Instead of giving your strength to women, find one excellent woman. Find one virtuous woman. Uh, it's about quality and not quantity. Uh, you don't need a lot of women, Lemuel. You just need one good one. Uh, you hear me, brothers? Uh, it's not a football team with starters and backups. Uh, it's not a basketball team with all-stars and role players. Uh, and it's not just the brothers. <clears throat> women, y'all play the game too. Some women have one man for conversation, a sugar daddy for money, a Mr. Fix-It for home repairs, and some dude to meet your needs. Listen to a mother's warning. Uh, mama said, pick one. Uh, it's, it's not two fives that make a ten. Uh, if you find you a good seven or eight, uh, you need to go ahead and make that commitment to that person. Pick one. Don't give your way to that which is inconsistent with who you are. Don't give your attention to those who destroy kings. Make the determination that you are going to be focused and determined. It's not for kings. Lemuel, don't give your heart to many women. Then she says, it's not for kings to drink strong drink. Uh, your calling is too great. And your future is too bright for you to be controlled by substances or impaired by alcohol. Uh, Lemuel's mother warns him of the abuse of power and the indulgence in pleasures that will damage your kingdom and derail your kingship. Uh, anyone have a mother like Lemuel's mother uh, who would say, that's not a good look for a king. Uh, 
Uh, that, that's unbecoming of a queen. We, we need some mothers who will sound the alarm and let the children know the dangers that are out there who will put their child up on game so that they will recognize the game, not so that they can get better at playing the game. Then his mother would say, just because you can, that doesn't mean you should. Uh, lives are destroyed and futures are ruined when your access leads to excess. Uh, as the king, he had access. Access to women, access to alcohol, access to all the pleasures of life. Uh, but Lemuel's mother reminds us that access leads to excess and that excess leads to ruin. It is not for kings. Don't get caught up and forget that you are royalty, child of God. Uh, we are part of God's royal family. The second Timothy chapter 2 verse number 12 tells us that if we endure, we will reign with Christ. We have been given dominion here on the earth. We are representatives of God in the kingdom of God here on earth. And we will reign with Christ in heaven. We are royalty. We have access to power. Only use your authority and your access to serve others, not to serve yourself. You have to keep your calling in mind as you live your life. Don't walk down a path that destroys kings and queens. Uh, why, why, why is this so important? Lemuel's mother says, because when you mess up, it's not just you that reaps the consequences of you messing up. The decisions that you make have an impact on other people. Uh, this, this case for sobriety and self-control is rooted in the bedrock of justice. It is the responsibility of the king, of leaders of any organization, especially of the government as we see here, to administer justice fairly. But a lack of self-control leads to selfish disregard for others and inability to examine questions impartially and consequently the perversion of justice. Isaiah chapter 5, verse number 22 through 23. Isaiah 5, 22 through 23. Woe to those who are heroes at drinking wine, who are champions at pouring beer, who acquit the guilty for a bribe and deprive the innocent of justice. Isaiah says that it is shameful for you to be a, a drinking champion. Because in your drunkenness, you will let the guilty go free and deprive the innocent of justice. Don't let your judgment be impaired. You are in a position where what you say and do matters, your words and decisions impact the future of others, so your mind needs to be clear so that you can judge fairly and discern righteously. That's a mother's warning. And then finally, we see a mother's wisdom in verses nine, 6 through 9, Proverbs 31, 6 through 9, give strong drink to him who is perishing and wine to him whose life is bitter. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his trouble no more. Open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all the unfortunate. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and defend the rights of the afflicted and needy. A mother's wisdom. A scripture speaks of uh, the medicinal and anesthetic uses 
of wine. At the same time, it warns us against excess. And so when Lemuel's mother says what she says here in verse number 6, give strong drink to him who is perishing and wine to him who, uh, whose life is bitter, she is not recommending a free liquor program for the poor. Uh, nor is she justifying using alcohol as an opiate for the masses. Her point is that as a king, you must avoid drunkenness in order to reign and rule properly. Uh, there, there, there might be some people who could get away with it, but you don't want to be one of them. You live differently from others because you are different. Live for a purpose greater than yourself. And according to Lemuel's mother, equity is the first duty of leadership. Speak for those whose voices have been silenced. Use your voice to speak truth to power. Use your influence to liberate those who are in bondage. You are to stand up for those who cannot stand up for themselves. Defend the rights of the afflicted and the needy. You are in a position of power. Don't be corrupted by your power, but use your power for the good that God designed for you to use it. Judge righteously. Don't judge based on how it may benefit you. Don't abuse your power. Use your power for the glory of God. Use your position and influence to make the lives of others better. We will encounter those who, whose lives are bitter. And the power of the gospel is that the gospel can turn bitter into better. Uh, the gospel has the transforming power when people are down, when they are depressed, when they are oppressed. Not only do they need justice, but they need Jesus. Because Jesus is the one who brings about true justice. Uh, this this mother's words blessed Lemuel. Her words made him a better king. And as a result of her words, those that Lemuel led were blessed. Uh, that suggests to me that a mother's wisdom has far-reaching impact beyond her children. Uh, mothers, the kingdom is blessed by your wisdom. Lives are changed by your words. Mothers, you are women of influence. The words you share with your children will bless their marriages later. The words you share now will guide them in the path of righteousness later. What you say to them now will lead them to right decisions later. The warnings that you share now will keep them out of trouble later. The wisdom you give now will be manifested in their words and their actions later. You have an impact that extends beyond just your children. It extends to your children's children. It extends to everyone that your children come in contact with long after your children have left your house your words will stay with them long after you have left this earth and your head presses a dying pillow your words will stay with your children so mothers remember your vows like Lemuel's mother, have a will, have a determination to warn and to share wisdom. No, it won't be easy, but remember your vow. There will be distractions from the enemy, but remember your vow. Other people won't understand why you parent the way you do, but remember your vow. Your children are going to pout and complain that they can't do everything their friends are doing, but remember your vow. Make sure uh, that you will that you focus on what your vow is. There will be times when you will have to 
Re repent and refocus for the mistakes that you've made but remember your vow you will get tired you will be overworked and feel underappreciated but remember your vow if you never receive praise from people over here it's alright because God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him remember your vow a mother's words have far-reaching impact long after mothers have gone. Uh, if you are outside of Christ, if your life is bitter, uh, you need Jesus. Uh, because Jesus is the one who brings about the freedom, the justice that we so desire. Uh, and it's godly mothers uh, who lead their children to Christ. And we thank God for those mothers uh, who poured into our lives. Uh, but even if uh, your mother was not a child of God, uh, she did the best she could. And uh, the psalmist would say in uh, Psalm 27, in essence, it's all right if uh, your parents failed you. Because when my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. If you believe Jesus to be the Son of God, repent of your sins, confess Jesus Christ as Lord, we will baptize you this morning for the forgiveness of your sins. You'll become a Christian, a child of God, a part of the body of Christ. If you want to be saved, we encourage you to come forward if you are in the building. Uh, if you are online and wish to be saved, if you will just put it in the chat on YouTube or if you uh, will reach out to us through our website or uh, you can text the uh, church phone number 214-941-2531. We would love to be able to uh, to uh, teach you, uh, to baptize you into Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. If you're in the building and you wish to respond to the invitation uh, by being baptized or uh, placing uh, your membership here, we ask that you will come forward. Those uh, who wish to ask for prayer, you can stand uh, right where you are. Uh, and as Shepherd Manze comes forward, he will take, uh, he will pray uh, for those who are standing. Any who wish to respond to the invitation, uh, you may do so now. Can we say amen together for... Uh, I mean, it's, that's a fantastic sermon for Mother's Day, but that's a, that's a fantastic sermon for any day. If you uh, were requesting prayer, would you please remain standing? We'll be praying together shortly. Just, if you'll just remain standing if you're requesting prayer this morning. We want to thank Brother Ross for the sermon that we've heard. Uh, we just pray God's blessings upon him and his family as he continues to study and deliver God's words. For those who are standing and for those who have not stood this morning, let us go to God in prayer on their behalf. Our God and our Father, Lord, we, we thank you for this day. Lord, the days come and they go, but we pause to, to realize that there is no day without you. And we just thank you for the blessings of another day. We thank you for the present and the presence of another day. Lord, we pray now, especially for those who have heard this message this morning, and perhaps it has touched their hearts, but perhaps there are things in their lives that are not right, and they would like for you to make them right. They would like for your intervention. They would like for you to bless them in a very special way. And Lord, so we pray for them this morning that you will bless them, that they might be comforted, that might be strengthened, that they might be encouraged by those things that have challenged them uh, at this present time. Lord, even for those of us who did not stand, we just we ask your particular blessings this morning for whatever the issues are in our lives. Lord, we know that you are a caring and loving God who wants the best for your children. Lord, but we also know that you are an awesome and powerful God who can make a difference, 
who can change things. And we just ask for your very special intervention at this time. Lord, we thank you for the message that we've heard. Lord, we thank you for our mothers. We thank you for for the influence that they have had in our lives. And we just pray that we will remember those lessons. We will remember those words that they have shared with us, that they might guide us and instruct us as we go forward. Bless us now, Lord, in all of these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And you may be seated. Again, we we thank Brother Ross for that powerful message. As we go forward now in our service, we turn to an opportunity to, to give back to God what he has blessed us to have in our lives. You know, the Bible teaches us that we should be a cheerful giver, that we should be a thoughtful giver, we should be a giver who purposes in our in our lives that we would give back to God so that this congregation at this location might be a blessing in the lives of this community. And so as the brothers prepare now to come forward, uh, you might give to them uh, in this particular offering. As the brothers come forward, if you'll just raise your hand, they will take your collection at this time. Let us pray together. Oh Lord God, we thank you for the privilege that we have to give back to you a portion of what you have blessed us to receive. Lord, we just pray that each is given out of careful consideration, out of appreciation, but out of a willing heart and a cheerful heart that they give back to you now. And we just pray that what has been given and received will be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. Lord, we thank you and we praise your high and holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for communion at this time. <clears throat> I really love the Lord, yes, the Lord, we're singing, I, I, I really love, love the, the Lord, oh yeah, you don't know what he's done for me and I know he gave me the victory that's why I said I love him I love him church I love love him oh I really love I really love the Lord oh sing one more time and we're singing I I really love him really love the the Lord the one who died for me and you oh we're singing I I really love the Lord Come on right now, you, you don't know what he's done for me. Yeah. He gave me the victory, that's why, that's why I love him. Do you love him, church? I love Love him, oh, I really love, I really love the Lord. Yeah, we're singing, come on, I, I know how sweet 
sweet he's been every day by light oh yeah singing he he is a lawyer your friend what you say right now come on and hear how he suffered he bled and he died yeah, for me he was crucified that's why i said i love him do you love him church i love love him oh i really love i believe love the lord praise his name right now oh, you you don't know what he's done for me i know he gave me the victory that's why that's why i love him church do you love him oh i love love him oh i really love i really love the lord oh, one more time yeah you you don't know what he's done for me yeah. he gave me the victory thank you father that's why i love him do you love him church i love love him oh i really love i really love the lord oh, oh, We've come to the part of our service where we are very blessed and fortunate to <clears throat> show the sacrifice that Christ made <clears throat> for each and every one of us. I read for you 1 Corinthians 11th chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had, <clears throat> when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in the remembrance of me. Let us pray. Lord, we come thanking thee for the sacrifice that you made on the cross that gave us a right <clears throat> and a privilege to be able to know your Father. Lord, we come thanking and we don't take it lightly that as we commemorate this, that we remember the pain and the suffering that you went through for the sins of our, not yours, but us. Lord, we ask you to continue to bless us and keep us in your perfect love. In Jesus' name we pray. You may take the bread. After the same manner, he took the cup, which he had stopped saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. Do you this as often as you drink it in the remembrance of me? For <clears throat> let us pray for the cup. Lord, we thank you for your shedded blood, which represents our salvation. We know that the sacrifice that you made was one that you chose to make and that gave us the right to the tree of life. Lord, we ask you as we continue to 
follow thee and as we continue to be in it, you have you as an example for us that we will be pleasing and uplifting in our sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may not take the cup. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthy shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Let us pray. <clears throat> Our dear God, we thank you for this fellowship. We thank you for Brother Ross and the message that he brought. We ask you to continue to crown his head with wisdom and knowledge that he might rightly divide the word of truth. We appreciate the matter in which he study and the way that he bring your word. We hope, pray, and trust that we as a congregation will take the fruit of that word and make it be life for us that we might be able to give to those that know not thee and the pardon of thy sin. Lord, we come asking a special blessing of all of those that are sick and shut in, all of them that know not thee and the pardon of thy sin. Lord, we ask you to throw your arms of protection around us as we leave this place, but never your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, we have just a few announcements to make you aware of. Uh, first, uh, to all of our Marcellus members, we have been invited to attend a virtual Issachar conference hosted by Dr. Richard Barclay and the Stonecrest Church of Christ. It begins today, I think the time is at 1 p.m. and it runs through May 12th. We will be sending out a link via the MACC app and also uh, via the email distribution list that we have. So again, that's to the Issachar Conference hosted by the uh, Stonecrest Church of Christ and Dr. Richard Barclay. And then also for those that are in Brother Bradford's connection group, uh, his weekly connection group, they will not be meeting, you will not be meeting today in recognition of Mother's Day, but we will resume uh, next Sunday. So that's Brother Bradford's weekly connection group uh, will not be meeting today. And then also uh, from our college ministry, we've been making this announcement for the last couple of weeks, so we want to make sure that you get it. Uh, to our 2021 graduates, we're asking you to please contact the college ministry because they are compiling a list of graduates. Uh, the graduation program would take place July the 18th. The deadline to submit the information is June the 15th, and you can submit that information to MACC grad, that's the email, maccgrad at gmail.com. And also to our first year college students, uh, if you completed at least 12 hours of course studies uh, for the spring semester, we're asking you also to submit your transcript to the college ministry in order to receive your first year college stipend. Uh, again, the deadline to submit that is also June the 15th. Uh, you can submit your transcript to that same email address, uh, maccgrad at gmail.com. If you have any questions regarding uh, either one of those announcements from the college ministry, you can contact Brother Chris Lopez. These are all the announcements that we have uh, this morning. You can now consider yourselves dismissed. <laughs>